Hey, how are you? I hope you are doing fine. I am your friend Joey and in this video of Joey's Tech, we are going to look into the problem of finding the longest alternating subarray and we are going to use dynamic programming technique to find it. Without waiting any further, let's jump onto its problem statement. Alright, so the first statement of the problem begins with providing you an array of integers that contains both positive and negative integers. So it is not an array of only positive integers. You have to remember that this is an array that contains both positive and negative integers. The ask is to find out the length of the longest alternating subarray. So you are going to ask what an alternating subarray is. So an alternating subarray is a set of integers from the main array which is given to you in which every two consecutive integers have opposite sides. So this is the main array and you can see that it is filled with both positive and negative integers and this is the LAS that means the longest alternating subarray and you can see that it totally aligns with the definition mentioned above every two consecutive integers have opposite signs in this subarray now you have to take a note that a subarray is different from a subsequence as a subarray is a set of adjacent integers from the main array so if you consider this subarray then you can see in the main array that all the integers of the subarray are consecutive in nature so i'm sure that you have got the problem statement now we are going to solve this problem using dynamic programming technique in our framework but before we do that if you haven't subscribed to my channel already then please do so hit the subscribe button and the bell icon because that way you will get notified whenever i release videos like this in the future now let's switch to the framework and solve this problem okay so i have the main array over here and these are the indexes that represent the cells of the main array this is the solution array that we are going to fill and it is going to give us the length of the longest alternating subarray as well as the longest alternating subarray we are going to start from the first sub problem which is going to be this cell so all we have to do is imagine if the array had only one so what the value of this cell is going to be so as per me it is going to be one so if one is only there in the main array then the length of the longest alternating subarray becomes one so you are going to ask me there is no subsequent negative integer so how have you considered it as one so if you check any alternating subarray let's uh, consider 1 and minus 2 what is the length what the length is going to be it is going to be 2 if these two components if these two integers are giving us the length as 2 the first half is going to give me as 1 hence i am storing 1 over here now we move to the next index and our sub problem becomes this that means now we have 1 n minus 2 in our array so in order to calculate the value of this cell we need to check if the value of the cell immediately before this cell has an opposite sign so here the sign is negative so we are looking for a positive sign and we have it here how we are going to check how the algorithm is going to check if the value of the cell immediately before the current cell has an opposite sign the simplest way is we multiply these two integers and we check if the result of the multiplication is less than zero so that is going to certify that there is a candidate for alternating subarray over here so if we multiply minus 2 and 1 then we are going to get minus 2 which is less than zero so we can say that yes we have an alternating subarray candidate over here all right now we are using dynamic programming so we need to use the optimized value of the previous sub problem which is one so all we will do is add 
1 to this one over here and we'll get the answer as 2. So why we added 1? We added 1 for this minus 2. Logically speaking, we have the length for this sub problem coming as 2 which is correct because this is an alternating sub array. Now we move to the next set and our sub problem contains 1 minus 2 and 5 now. Alright, so what we are going to do? We are going to multiply these two integers, the current cell and the cell before it. What the result of the multiplication will be? So, the multiplication of minus 2 and 5 is going to give me minus 10, which is less than 0. Again, the algorithm is going to think that it is getting an alternating subarray candidate over here. So, what it will do? It will add 1 to this cell. The cell immediately before the current cell. Adding 1 to it, which is for this 5, is going to give me 3. And if you check logically, then 3 is the length of this alternating subarray. Alright, now we move to the next cell. So the subproblem contains 1 minus 2, 5 and 4. Great. Now, 4 is the value of the current cell, plus 4. If we multiply 4, with the value of the cell previous to it, then we are going to get 20 and that is not less than 0. That means there is no candidate of sub array over here. So simply we are going to place 1 over here. That's it. So it also represents that we have an alternating sub array till here, right? The length of which is 3 and then we have got a break. The alternating sub array stops over here and we have uh, an integer of different sign over here. Hence, we have put in the value as 1. Alright, moving to this cell. So, if I multiply minus 3 with the value of the cell previous to it, which is 4, then I get minus 12. So, the algorithm is going to think that I have got an alternating subarray candidate again. So, what it is going to do, it is going to add 1 to this one over here which is the value of the cell previous to the current cell in the solution array. So it is going to get 2 and it will populate 2 over here. Now if you check 4 and minus 3, this is an alternating subarray, the length of which is 2. All right. So this is what is happening here. Okay. We move to this cell. Now again, when 5 is multiplied by minus 3, we get minus 15 that is less than 0. So again, a sub array candidate is here. So what we are going to do for this 5, we are going to add plus 1 to this 2 and we are going to get 3 over here. All right. So this also says that 4 minus 3 and 5 is an alternating sub array. Okay, moving on to this cell, we have minus 4. We multiply this with the value of the cell previous to it, which is 5, and we get minus 20, which is less than 0. So we have an alternating subarray candidate again over here. So for this minus 4, we add plus 1 to this 3, and we get 4, which we populate over here. Moving on to this cell, we have minus 2. If I multiply minus 2 with minus 4, I am going to get plus 8, which is not less than 0. That means the alternating subarray breaks over here and maybe a new subarray starts or, or it's an individual integer for the algorithm. So what we are going to populate in this case is 1 and this completes my array. So I'm going to traverse through this solution array and pick out the maximum value, which is 4. All right. And this is the length of the longest alternating subarray. All right. Now finding the longest alternating subarray is very easy. So we have got its length as 4. We need to check what is the index of the maximum length. So it is 6. All we need to do in order to find out the starting index is subtract 4 from this 6 and then add 1 to it. So 6 minus 4 is going to give us 2 plus 1 is going to give me 3. So the starting index is going to be 3. 
and if we check the problem array and if we pick out the sub array from index 3 to index 6 then the sub array comes out as 4 minus 3 5 minus 4 which is what we saw in our slide so this is the longest alternating sub array and 4 is the length of the longest alternating sub array when we have this array given in the problem now let's check its algorithm so this is the algorithm if uh, mean i multiplied by mean i minus 1 is less than 0 so mean is our problem array then solution i is going to be solution i minus 1 plus 1 like we saw in the framework else solution i is simply going to be 1 the time complexity of this dynamic programming algorithm is o n so with this we have come to the end of this video i hope you learned from this video i hope you got this problem of finding longest alternating sub array i look so much forward to help you with programming and algorithms do let me know in comments if you have any doubt related to this problem and only for this video goodbye and take care